thank goodness I have backup gasoline vehicles as well. Those who drive electric cars might be noticing uh, you're not going as far as you thought you would. You have an EV. Yeah, we have an electric vehicle, and this time of year, uh, you lose about 20. I was talking to my husband about this last night. You lose about 20% of, of your charge. So he's at the supercharger a lot more. Also with cold, too, it's it's both ends of the spectrum. It's a chemical reaction, so it, it slows down uh, the, how fast the electrons can move within the battery. Nigel Zeed is an expert in electric vehicles. Certainly it slows down, uh, just like your phone will lose more charge if you left it out now, or, or a flashlight battery. I want to show you this new data from Recurrent. It's a company that studied 7,500 batteries from electric vehicles, and it found that the hotter it gets, look at that, your EV starts to lose 15, 25, even 31 percent of its efficiency. And so what's going on here is the battery in the car is using up more energy to try to cool itself down. And also the chemistry inside the battery doesn't work as well when it's this hot. You know, you get in your car and it says 110 degrees. Imagine that with the battery underneath it, you know, so, you know, it's trying to cool itself down. But when the weather is hot, the car is still going to work for the most part. It's just not going to work as efficiently or for as long as maybe you had planned. Now, if you didn't know that and didn't read the owner's manual or didn't do research, I think some buyers could be upset by that. You know, if you're driving over 200 miles a week, this starts to become a huge problem. And clearly, uh, people, you know, of, of there's millions that don't live inside of cities, particularly after the pandemic, are realizing EVs are not ready. They're not ready for prime time rural. But the other narrative that's very problematic for the entire EV market, and this is in every jurisdiction, whether it's domestic or international, is EV power. In other words, the cost of filling up your battery is not free anymore. So if you bought a Tesla in the first iteration, part of that deal was wherever you plugged in at a superstation, it was free. That's not the case anymore. When you plug it into your house, your electrical bill goes up. Where does this power come from? Are people starting to ask that every day now? Well, it comes from burning gas and hydrocarbons and even coal. That's right. And so this narrative between EV and green is falling apart a little bit. Uh, if electric cars are so swell, how come government has to pay people to drive them? So I think, um, as like most most government policies, right, are are put in place to incent certain behaviors, and so there's part of the policy is that if we want more, yeah, yeah, but cars, if they're so swell, why couldn't they in just in a competitive market, you know, people, why wouldn't they be choosing e electric cars over in, uh, internal combustion engine cars? I think why, why do we have to pay people to drive them? But I, don't, I wouldn't characterize it as paying people to drive them, but I would. Well, sure we are. We're giving a big old tax credit. As the government uh, having a policy to incent more uh, purchase of electric vehicles. Okay.